In this video, I'm going to talk about Facebook event ads, and that's not to get confused by Facebook event tracking. If you're looking for how to set up Facebook event tracking, just click on that little link right there. We'll send you to it. All right, by an event, I mean a social gathering. Think along the lines of a concert or a release date on a specific product. Now, an event doesn't always have to be in person. We've seen a lot of conferences move to virtual events. We've also seen a way that we can promote webinars a lot more, and we can do this with Facebook ads. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can set up your event on your Facebook page in your business profile, and then also how you can boost that event to drive attendees. You're gonna see that you can start collecting interest within that event, but also even sell tickets directly from your Facebook event ads. It's really simple to set up. It'll only take a couple minutes, so let me show you how. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise, but I still have to mention it. If you want to run Facebook event ads, you need to have an event created in Facebook. So I am already on the events page. Now, to get here when you're logged into your business manager and then you're on your business profile page, just click on the events tab as I have highlighted here in the upper navigation. Assuming you don't have any upcoming events already in place on your Facebook page, let me just go through a really quick walkthrough of how to set one up. Let's click on create event. And now I can start creating my new event. By default, Facebook has took our main profile image and made that the main event photo. You can change it to be a different photo or you can actually use a video. It's one of Michelle and I when we were in the same session at SMX West a few years ago. Next, we need to fill in some of the other required fields. We have the event name. You can then choose your location. By default, it is gonna be the location that you entered when initially creating your business page. You have the option to search different areas or you can use the map pin to find specific cities, neighborhood, or exact placements on where this event is gonna be happening. So if this is a live in-person event, you can search for the exact location. If you're having a virtual event, you may choose something really broad, like in this case, we just chose the United States, and we could save that location. Next, add your description of the event. And of course, this is up to you to make it as descriptive as you want. And then we need to choose an event category. There are preset options here. We cannot enter a custom category option. We can see these categories are fairly high level. I'll scroll semi-slowly just so we get an idea of what some of them are. And if none are really applicable, you can just select other. Next, you can choose the frequency on which these events will occur. Typically like a concert, it's a one type of event. Your webinar may only be a one-time event, so that's fine. But let's pretend you're a restaurant and you have a happy hour special that happens every Tuesday. You have Taco Tuesdays, yay! All right, you can select that to be a weekly event and then you can update when that event starts. If you want that event to end on a specific Tuesday further down the road and then enter in the times of that event. Same thing with a webinar series. If you're consistently having webinars and you do not want to create an event for every single new webinar that you're having knowing it's on a consistent schedule, just update the frequency. Just keep in mind if the content of that webinar or that live event, and maybe the guests that you have at your event, the description of the event is going to be different, that's when we recommend creating a new event for every single one. But to make this easy, I'm just gonna say this occurs once and keep the times fairly simple. I just made up a date and a time. We're not really speaking anywhere on June 1st. If you're co-hosting the event with a different brand or a different Facebook page, or if you're co-hosting with the location of where the event is happening, you can add a co-host to the mix. And notice the warning from Facebook itself, co-hosts will have editing privileges and can add the event to their calendars to help spread the word. Hopefully you trust your co-host if you're holding an event together. The more publicity you can drum up for that event, of course it's gonna be a good thing, but also make sure that they have the rights to edit that event. Depends on how protective you are, but we have to let you know that. Next, you can add some additional information that you may feel is important to guests who are attending your event. Some examples include possibly an art show where there's multiple galleries. This could be like one big music festival where there's an entire lineup lasting the whole day. Same thing could be like a conference, whether in person or a virtual conference. You can add a schedule, add additional items. So one item could be one speaker, your second item could be another speaker, and then we would adjust the times than when we're speaking with optional end dates if it is an event that goes multiple days. So yes, the schedule is different than the start and end dates you're creating for the actual event itself, but I'm just gonna cancel this one. Next, you can type in keywords that can help people find your event publicly. There are some default options. I tried to type in marketing, but that wasn't popping up. I just get farmer's market and flea market, definitely not applicable, but it doesn't mean you can just add these keywords yourself. And then if applicable, you can tag if this event is kid friendly and if you're looking for volunteers. And hey, volunteering showed up as a keyword. And one of the cool features about creating events on Facebook is you can start collecting emissions directly from that event that you created. If you add a confirmation, you can add a maximum of how many spots there are available. And if you want to set a limit of how many spots each person can have. 
You can also add custom questions to possibly filter out the quality of your users interested in attending your event. You can see one example right here. Facebook is saying, why are you interested in this volunteer opportunity? You can customize the question to be whatever you want, but then also add a few other options if you feel it's important. If you have an Eventbrite account, you can connect it to your Facebook event. Eventbrite will make it easy in some cases to help track all the users coming to your event. I have used Eventbrite in the past. It made it really easy for me to keep track of the attendance, but then it also was an easy tool for us to collect money when we were selling those tickets to the event. So check out Eventbrite if this sounds interesting to you. If you don't want to use Eventbrite, and maybe you have the means to sell the tickets directly on your own website, you can add a link to the tickets yourself. And then you could choose if the tickets are on sale now, or if you're creating the Facebook event ahead of time, just to get the awareness out there and tickets go on sale at a later date, you can also set that. I'm not gonna go on the options of who can see the event, that's gonna be all up to you. But if everything looks good, then you can publish the event. Okay, it took a little bit, but our event is live. And we can see immediately Facebook has put that pop-up right in our face, asking if we want to boost the event. So you do have the option to start running ads, boosting the event just like you would with a boosted post. If you click the boost event, you can select your objective. If you want to sell more tickets or just get more eyeballs on the ad itself, you can update the ad creative so you don't have to use the image or video that you had to put when creating the event itself. You can see Facebook took the description that I inputted into the event and made it the main text for the ad. Again, you have the control to change this to whatever you want. And then you have the option to create a new audience. If you wanna focus just on current fans of your page, you can do that. You can select people in your local area or you can edit your audience and this is gonna look really familiar. Start searching for the demographics, interest behaviors, life events, all the targeting options that we have in Facebook to potentially reach a new audience. And then if you wanna select your duration, your budget, Make sure all your tracking and your pixels in place. And then if you click boost, you will be able to start promoting your event. But I'm gonna cancel this boost. We're back in the main event section of our Facebook business page. And we can see the published event that we just created. So if I have a client who's already created the event, I'm not gonna see that pop-up come up letting me boost the event. If you're not in the one controlling the events, but you have to advertise and market them, circle back to the events page, which is exactly where we started. There we can see all the past events. We can click the boost event button and we're gonna get the same boost setup that we saw just a minute ago. So you can see it is really easy to create the event you are trying to promote and then easily create a boost campaign that will show up in your ads manager to start building awareness whether you wanna push tickets or just get more people to attend your free event. Besides boosting your posts, you can also head to the main ads manager interface and start creating a new campaign. When selecting your campaign objective, choose engagement, and you can see one of the engagement types we can select is event responses. As we continue, when you start creating a new ad set, you can see the setup is exactly the same as any typical Facebook campaign you're about to set up. So I'm gonna skip over all the audience and the location and all the targeting options. As we're creating an ad for this specific campaign, we need to select our Facebook page. And then when you scroll down a little bit, you can see we need to search for our specific event. It helps if you have the exact Facebook event URL, but if you know what the main title of the event is, you can just search for it. In our case, I only created the one event, so it pops up right away when I click the field. Automatically, the ad is gonna populate the title and the image we use to create our event. But just like any other Facebook ad, you can change the image to be something else, or you can take that image and make it into a video. And quickly, I just added some primary text so you could see where it would show up. And as I scroll back up and then slowly go down, you can see there's not a section for us to add a URL. If people click on the ad, they will be sent to the events page. But you can see in the lower right hand corner of this ad, they can choose if they are interested or they can also mark if they are going to the event. So while the campaign objective is to focus on responses to the event, it can still drive people to the events page. They may go through other channels to try and find the event or just by interacting with the event and going on the events page, you may be able to market to them in other ways. And let me dive into that one right now. Go up in the upper left hand corner and select audiences. For me, it's showing in my frequently used column, but if it's not there for you, you can go under assets and it's gonna be the first option. Then look at creating a new audience, and this is gonna be a custom audience. One custom audience option in Facebook is event engagement, where Facebook says it's creating an audience from people who have interacted with one of your events on Facebook. Again, this is not to be confused with custom event tracking that you have created off of your pixel and potentially use Google Tag Manager to create those custom events. These are the actual events that you have created and live on your Facebook page. So by default, I can create an audience off of people who responded that they were going or interested in any of my events from the past 365 days. A longer cookie window in the Facebook world. Now, if you have large events, and you wanna get more segmented with your audiences, you can choose select specific events and choose the events that you want specifically considered for this custom audience. 
I'm gonna remove this specific event and let's look at the other options we have for creating event custom audiences. We already went over the default one, if they responded with going or interested, but you can segment those out. If you wanna create an audience of people who are just going to an event, or just interested in an event, you can do that. You can remarket to people who just visited the event page, didn't really interact at all. You could use that as either a targeting option or potentially an exclusion. People who have engaged with the event or engaged with the ticket features of your event are most likely gonna be a much more worthy audience to try to go after with retargeting ads. Let's make it a little bit more specific. People who have definitely purchased tickets to your event or had the intent of purchasing tickets, think about clicking on the interaction button to go to Eventbrite to buy the tickets. These are deeper audiences that you may want to use for retargeting. Again, people who have engaged with the tickets or had the intention of purchasing tickets could be great for you to run some separate retargeting campaigns on Facebook. People who have already committed the act of buying a ticket, whether it's paid or whether it's free, you most likely may want to add those as an exclusion audience for that current event. So you're using your budget to try to get more users into your venue. Also, if you have a good amount of people who said they were going to your event, or they've already bought tickets, you can then create lookalike audiences from those conversion actions and then run new Facebook event ad campaigns to those lookalike audiences to try to get more of those users who may be interested in your event. But once you have selected the right audience that you wanna create, you can always adjust the amount of days you want to be part of that audience and then name your audience and then save the audience by clicking the create audience button. Now you are ready to create some additional event ads on Facebook. So whether your event is in person or it's virtual, hopefully you now see how you can use Facebook ads to really promote your event. The targeting options are pretty much the same. We just get that added bonus that we can create audiences from people who have previously engaged or currently engaged with your events. So you can utilize these for potential other campaigns to keep that awareness going for any potential future events. So good luck setting up these campaigns and hope the next event that you have is a full house. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.